black men, nobody is your biggest op than the niggas you left behind in the hood. When you figure it out, when you figure out your game plan, and you got a good, you got a good a good thing going for yourself, and you making some money, and you things are on the up and up. I want you to leave the hood and never, ever, ever return. Don't ever look back. There is nobody who is watching you harder than them niggas you left behind in the hood. Leave them there and never return. Keep moving upward and onward. Like, what happened in Atlanta yesterday, it happens all the time, unfortunately. But it's so sad to see people, see somebody who's actually... He got his own business. You know what I'm saying? Like, figuring it out in real time. And it be your own people. You know what I'm saying? Leave and never look back. Tell your story from a distance. Don't be of the hood. Leave the hood and never look back. The plan is to get out of the hood. Once you make it out of the hood, y'all, please stop hugging the block. All right, family. So this sister, I see what she's trying to say. I don't agree 100%. I think you do need to meter how much you're in your hood. And if you do have so, so-called homeboys that they didn't want to do nothing, and they're like, oh, man, you just need to, you got it, give it to me, cut them off and move around. I think you can be effective in your hood. You just can't be as hands-on as you would want to be. Listen, right now, I'm at the Capitol, okay? I'm here for a movie screening, but I'm walking through the halls, and look whose office I came by. Look, Auntie Maxine, I want to say this. I know black people love you just because you're black, but you've been in office for about 75, 80 years. Your district is in shamble. The black people in your district are sleeping in piss and on the sides of the street. The homeless people need housing. You guys have done nothing for the black community the whole entire 80 years that you have been in office. Please don't be like your friend John Lewis and die in the seat. Pass the torch, get out, move around, let somebody else make real positive impact and change for our communities, okay? We love you, auntie. You don't serve this time. Your time is up. I came to tell you to your face, but you weren't here. Why are y'all mad because we won't accept Tyler? Why are y'all trying to force Tyler down our throat? The real issue is y'all do what everybody else do to black Americans. Y'all always trying to introduce us to something or sell us a product because y'all know it's power in our black dollars. Now, I'm not going to lie. She over there on Twitter trying to snap and say, oh, well, y'all trying to make everything a big deal. And you got some people saying stuff like, oh, well, black people are just mad because she says she's not black. No, no, that's not the issue. The issue is y'all always trying to put everything into correlation to blackness to make a profit, to benefit off of us. Y'all have not done anything genuine to black people, and not just Tyler, all of y'all who do that. The Eunice people with the hair, the people um who do makeup and all that, y'all always try to think, y'all don't think in terms of y'all are selling stuff to black people. But black people are the majority people who put the money in y'all pocket. Ain't nobody buying out these big designers like us. Ain't nobody buying out Nike like us. Some of y'all are going to mess around and seriously end up getting hurt. I think you might want to chill. Um, I can promise you, you'll be six feet deep before any of us become your slave or anyone else's for that matter. My black sisters are tired of the BS and I love it. Oh, I love it. Mm. Beautiful. It's very one-sided and that's why I keep saying it trickles down to jealousy. Because I tell every black American, you got to think about it like this. Why is it the first thing a black British person always wants to do is, oh, we know our roots, you know, we speak about our roots, we speak about our roots. Yeah, y'all speak about y'all roots, but the funny thing is where y'all roots are, y'all never live there. Because my thing is, maybe it's best I don't know my roots, because it seems like the black British people who scream they know their roots, y'all don't ever live in the countries that y'all have all this pride in. No, instead, y'all leave the country where you were oppressed in and then go to your oppressor's land and make him even more money. Except the difference is, instead for being in your country and them taking all your resources away from you and enslaving you in your own land, y'all get your asses up and then go to your oppressor's land and willingly make him more money. Because my thing is this, 
if y'all have all this pride in your roots, why are you not there to help make y'all? These are countries where they literally let y'all like if you're from the Caribbean, they let you have a black country. If y'all are from black countries and y'all have all this pride in where you're from, then why are you not there putting wealth and finance in your own infrastructure? Why are you getting your ass up, getting on a ship in a plane, literally paying people to ask them to marry you so you can get citizenship in another country to go live a better life? Because if there's all this pride, then you should not be leaving where y'all are from in droves. Like, y'all should not be leaving in droves if y'all love where you're from so much. And that's where we get back to the lack of a community. Because the first thing they'll say is when they, I ask them, well, why aren't you in the country where y'all have pride in? Oh, corruption, corruption. Hmm. So what you're saying is in a country where if everybody's black, the government is mainly black, they don't even look out for you. explains a lot <laughs> and then once again you look at everybody crazy when we say some of y'all sold your own people it shows because in the country y'all are from y'all get treated like shit by y'all own people so y'all can miss me with the whole we know our roots we, we know where we come from heritage once again let me break it down to you if you're caribbean you do not know your roots your roots was created once you got there on a ship that a lot of british spaniards dutch french people brought you to Portuguese as well. And once again, y'all don't make nobody over here want to know their roots because seeing how y'all don't like to live in the places that y'all come from, why would I want to be there? A lot of y'all always had the same story where it's that y'all go from where y'all are from to like the UK and y'all be living in a one bedroom apartment with five or six different families from around the world. Let's me know that baby, I think I'm all right where know where I'm from because if you're willing to leave where you're from to go live in a one bedroom apartment or flat with 20 different strangers, it lets me know everything I need to know. <laughs> but oh well, all I say is when the next soccer game comes, tighten up them laces. Now his brother, I think he is LGBT. He might be Asiatic because he does have Asian look to him. However, he was the one I saw break news that France stinks. It's ugly during the daytime, and the only thing that looks good is the Eiffel Tower, and it's at night. And the food is is junk. Like, they have more American restaurants over there than they do French restaurants. So he does bring a good point that we've seen. These tethers, they get on their high horse, and we knew where we were from. No, no, eh, not really. That's why all you got, like, January birthdays. <laughs> why are there so many black people not supporting Kamala? Because we understand this when I was younger, which arrived me to my standpoint of being a conservative because I believed it was racist, Democrat, liberal ideologies and policies dating all the way back to the 1800s, all the way up to the 1960s, and then you know, the purported big switch. But I think it was more so when Democrats decided to be a bit more cloak and dagger about their true opinions of black people and be more uh, secretive and more, oh, we want to help you by, you know, doing these things and seeing them as a career. Uh, affirmative action, welfare, all sorts so of wait, things that welfare, eventually so ruin our culture in places where we are now. Man, this might sound crazy, but while everybody out here making fun of these YNs and acting like they fearful of them, what we should be trying to do is radicalize their ass for real. And best believe me, I understand that all of them don't want to be rationalized with, talk to, all that type of shit. And we all know what Dr. Umar be talking about when he say they got to be put down for good. That's the case for some of them. Everybody can't be saved, and that's true. But a lot of them are just looking for something greater than themselves to believe in. And if they're willing to lose their life over a block they don't own, and we can help change their perspective into having the same mindset towards their own people, we cooking, bro. That might be exactly what we need to get over the hump. They may be the solution to some of our problems. It's just food for thought. It don't hurt to try. We need muscle. You know what I'm saying? We need people willing to go out there and do the dirty work. They already doing it. So just give them a different mission. I want to start off by saying that I want to thank everyone that sent me such love and inspirational messages. It really shows the reflection in this country that we are still a people of the Lord that still believes 
in Christ, our Savior. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. It really reflects in this country how now so many people are unified. And remember that race is our ethnicity, but being an American is our nationality. So it really shows that there is a true party of unity among us. And I'm so grateful for that. And they're the party of the elites in the Divine Nine. So let's get into this. So the Divine Nine is basically a group of nine black fraternities and sororities that swear their oath and secrecy to the sisterhood and brotherhood of their particular whatever fraternity and sorority they're joining. But they all fall under the umbrella of Divine Nine. So basically, whatever chapter, local chapter that you are a part of, they get together monthly and they, they host meetings. And then on an annual basis, they'll have galas, festivals, Greeks, picnics, etc. Something similar to what Kamala Harris was attending in Washington, D.C. festival recently. So basically, in my opinion, it just seems like it's just a pay for buddies organization because you don't need to join an organization to do civic duties and public service. So if you're joining this, it's really just basically for your own self-interest, your own benefits, influence, and to esteem you. So in light of Lindsey Davis being the moderator, which is Kamala Harris's um, sorority sister, I found other connections as well. So for instance, Letitia James, which is uh, the attorney general in New York with the civil um, fraud case against Donald Trump, is also a divine nine. And she also went to Howard University. Fannie Willis with the election fraud case in Georgia, she's the DA of Georgia, also is a divine nine and attended Howard University. Alvin Bragg in the hush money trial, I didn't really find any kind of membership of him being in the organization, but he is definitely affiliated with the Divine Nine. So just for kicks and giggles, I also looked into the E. Carroll case to see who presided over that case. And lo and behold, I found Judge Lewis A. Kaplan, which was also appointed by Bill Clinton. So now you see the connection between Kamala Harris and all of these DAs and, and judges and even with uh, Clinton. And they're in close proximity of Kamala Harris. So let's get to the mainstream media. So besides Lindsey Davis, you have Abby Phillips, Rachel Scott, Joy Reid, Al Sharpton, Sonny Hostin that is running the media airwaves. And they're all part of Divine Knowledge. So now just get to the radio. Who controls the radio airwaves? So you have Steve Harvey, Ricky, Ricky Smiley, um, D.L. Hughley, uh, and Roland Martin uh, that are prominent that I know that runs the air raid, the radio waves, and they're all part of Divine Nine. And if that wasn't enough, they had just inducted Michelle Obama into one of these Divine Nine organizations. So there's that. What we call these people in, our, in the black community is gatekeepers. That's what they are. Because they're controlling your media, they're controlling your courts, they're controlling the radio waves and trying to influence their minds and manipulate the minds of, black, of the black community in this country. That is the reason why black people are voting one way, because of these people. But see, let me tell y'all something. And I'm talking to these Greek organizations. You don't speak for all black people. If you have personal bias, you need to keep that to yourself. Because when the integrity to do your job ethically starts compromising because you have oath and prioritization to your sorority or fraternity, then it's either you either need to step aside or you need to step down. Y'all have a good day. Now, once again, family, these next two segments are to show you that some folk ain't got it all the way upstairs and they'll support Blue no matter who and no matter what. You do need to be able to answer these questions or need to be able to get to the answers. When you're confronted with these, don't freeze up, don't get tense, don't get upset. You keep calm and you'll be ready to answer the question. 
and also ask questions. What has the Democrats done for us? Tangible specifically for our group. Not for everybody, not for minorities, not for people of color, not for uh, underserved communities, none of that mess for black Americans, period. Watch them fold. No, no, I, I want I want an answer to that because that, that's your slogan, make America great again. When was America great for you? Okay, that is, our, American great is our freedom. That freedom, uh, your freedom? Freedom. Or all of our freedom. Everybody's freedom. Everybody's freedom. freedom. So yes. when was America great for all of us? When our forefathers. Forefathers. The ones that owned people? No. Which ones? You have to look at the history. You got to look at the history. I am. I'm that. asking you. Which for George Washington owned 300 people and went after a few of them for running away. They, they signed a constitution that made black people enslaved black people three-fifths of a human being i don't think it was great then if you're asking me a black woman right but that's you have to understand what our history mm -hmm. to get where we are today what's okay. happening is our media no i no is, no no jackie because again if you can't walk me through the greatness of america and how you want to restore it to a place where it was great before your whole argument falls apart. So walk me through when America was great. Okay. So America has been great forever. Now the problem oh, for, is okay. the people. For, for, for who though? No, no, I can't wait because you, you need to answer the question. And again, you call up and I'm, I'm glad Mississippi. I love the state. You're a Trump supporter, which, you know, I want to get into, you know, the reasons behind that, but it's all around this freedom thing and this greatness thing. And we need to settle on what that looks like for you and for me. And then for all of us, because if it's not going to be great for all of us, then it's not great for any of us, Jackie. Well, my question is, why don't you think it's great? Because I've grown okay. up and grown, I, I might, my, my, I, Okay. Don't, no, 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 no. You answer my question first, please. Okay. So Can you're, you? you're asking me when it, uh, when it was well, great. It's yes. been great. It has been, been great. It, it has been, been great. great. So, so, so slavery was great. Trail of Tears was great. The Chinese Exclusion Act, great. The Japanese internment, great. That was great. Jim Crow was great. Back of the bus, colors only water fountains. Let me see. Brown versus Board of Ed. Oh, the throwing of tomatoes at little girls. The bombing of a church with little girls in it. That was great. The hanging of hundreds and thousands of black people burning down towns in the 1920s. The draft riots in New York because of people having to fight for freedom. Uh, freedom is liberty is everything, right? Liberty is everything. That was a great America to you? Okay. Okay, you, but you, you, you can't just say okay. It was it great or not? Standing, it's it's people that make it bad. People make it bad. Yes, people racist people, bad, horrible people, genocidal way. people make it bad. You're absolutely right. It's all about people. People that we're going to give immunity to police so they can do their job. I'm giving federal immunity to police officers so they can do their job. You know, Kamala in this, we're fighting for your reproductive rights. It's starting to get a little disgusting because she sat up on that stage and said that Trump was lying about these late term abortions. And he's not. He's not because ABC wouldn't fact check. So guess what we had to do? We had to start doing the fact checking, right? So it's a girl on TikTok right now who called an abortion clinic to see if she could have a late term abortion. And this is what they said, and it disgusts me. And if this does not disgust you, and you still want to vote for her pushing it so hard after that, I'm going to have to worry about you, your conscience, your spirit, and where your soul going. Listen to this. Under so, Roe v. Wade, the question you, could, the you could do abortions in the seventh month, the eighth month, the ninth That's month. That's not true. And calling the care clinic in Bethesda, Maryland. Thank you for calling care. How can I help you? I am looking to have an abortion. How far along are you? I'm 34 right now. I am in a pretty desperate situation. My 
boyfriend is kind of out of the picture now, so I don't really have any support. An abortion at any stage is actually much safer than delivering a term pregnancy. It's a four to five day procedure. We do some basic lab work on you and start to dilate your cervix. After that, we do what we call the fetal injection. A needle is inserted through the abdomen and into the fetal heart where lidocaine is injected and that will completely numb the fetus so there's no pain. Um, and then after that, we inject a medication called digoxin and another medication called KCL into the fetal heart, which will slow and then stop the fetal heartbeat. And then on that fourth day, depending on how your cervix is dilated, we'll break your water and then we'll give you a medication called misoprostol. Misoprostol will sort of induce contraction and increase the dilation of your cervix. You're going to have contractions and cramping and then we'll assist you in sort of pushing in the induction and then remove all of the products of conception. You're definitely going to feel discomfort and cramping and a lot of pressure, but we do give you fentanyl and Versed during the procedure. We specialize in later trimester care. Our doctor is very well versed in what he's doing and he's very good. So I'm not like a rare situation. Y'all help women no. this late in pregnancy all the time? All the time. So as a mother, what I just heard is, is they kill your baby and then make you deliver it. That's that's what I just heard. That's what I just heard. That is disgusting. That's y'all y'all fighting for that? Y'all approve of that? That is sick. That is sick. When there are so many other forms of contraception before it gets to that point as a woman, you can get your ass on some birth control for one. You can use a condom for two. And if all else fails, you always have the morning after pill. Okay? Like are we serious with this? In case y'all didn't realize, they gave you reparations to the immigrants. And also, in case you didn't realize why y'all want to be inclusive and everybody's not racist and this, this, and that, everybody's riding the backs of y'all. So when civil rights era happened, we helped everybody. People rode on our backs, and that's when minority became a thing when we fought in civil rights and then we fought for reparations. Y'all need to watch where these dollars going and who benefiting off of them. It can help everybody but you. So no, we don't need to help everybody. We don't have no allies. We need to separate because integration was our downfall. Bye. There is not somebody more pro-black than a light-skinned black person that's tired of people thinking that they mixed. <laughs> when I tell y'all, bro, they be the most pro-black people in this world. There was nothing that the Breakfast Club hosts could actually do with Dr. Butch Ware. Now, with Jill Stein, they could play off of the, oh, she's a non-black woman running against a black woman for president and somehow correlating that to stifling our progress. And also because Jill Stein wasn't shucking and jiving like Hillary Clinton and pulling hot sauce out of her bag. But let's get back to Dr. Butch Whitt. The fact that they were so fixated on the fact that he mispronounced Kamala was simply because they had nothing else to rip apart out of his argument. This brother is an academic who is well-read and well-practiced in his reading. And all the conversations about black progress, change, hope, and all of those BS buzzwords were out of the window as soon as he was able to correlate the history of black radicals in the United States of America who not only fought for the equality for their own people, but also the people of Philistine. He was able to name names. He was able to quote Malcolm X, Kwame Ture, Asada Shakur. In addition to African leaders like Nelson Mandela and Thomas Sankara. I am personally offended by the way that blackness is being weaponized in this electoral cycle Ooh. in order to justify white supremacist genocide in Gaza. Expound. Uh, Please oh. do. Malcolm said of Zionism, of the, 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 the Zionist state, the Israeli state, he said that this is a white Jewish population, the Ashkenazi population, being given power by white imperialists to remove brown Arabs from their land. He said, so therefore Zionism is white supremacy. In 1979, open letter to the born again, James Baldwin said the same thing. He said the state of Israel was not created for the salvation of the Jews. It was created for the salvation of Western interests. When you go through Kwame Ture, Malcolm X, James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, Angela Davis, Asada Shakur, these are all people that, that cited the Palestinian resistance, well, not even to bring in the Africans, right? Not to mention Nelson Mandela, not to mention Thomas Sankara, who talked about Zionism as being the face of imperialism in the Middle East, right? This is what the black radical tradition taught me. And the black radical tradition taught me that if we weaponize our blackness in favor of white supremacy, then we become apostates from blackness itself. The title of this video is purely clickbait. I will admit it. The title of this video 
It's purely fucking clickbait. I only said this because I knew that the people who follow me, they're going to come and watch it regardless. And the motherfuckers who don't know anything about me, you see this title because this is the type of shit that you are into. And you're just going to come and be like, ooh, I got this motherfucker. But hear me out for a second. Black people, right? Black folk, my kin folk. You know what I'm saying? We all may not be skin folk, kin folk. How the fuck you say that shit? We have to stop. Okay? We have to to stop i say we because i am a i hate using the term black because they just gave us that shit but even though i don't make this type of content i don't say oh fuck black women or fuck black men i don't do that type shit i don't believe in that type shit but i keep seeing it every fucking day on my for you page we have to stop this shit i saw a video yesterday and the title threw me off which is the inspiration for why i made this video today the title threw me off because it was a, it was a, uh, I can't remember, what's that website called? That app where you got like the person at the top and then you got multiple people, everybody's got their own little bubble and they're all talking. You know what I'm talking about, I just can't remember. But it was like, oh man, listen to all these positive things that black women are saying about black men. And I was like, oh man, I love seeing this shit. I truly enjoy hearing the positive things that black men and women say about each other. So I just watched it and it was just clickbait. It was clickbait because the shit that these women were saying about black men, it, it was horrible. They even had a white, one of the segments had a white guy talking to these black women about what they think the problem is with black. And I was like, bro, is this what we came to? Is, is, is this the level that we're at? Is this where we're at right now? Regardless of what the fuck happened to you, regardless of your problem with black women or the, regardless of your problem with black men or whatever, you have to understand something, right? Every single man or woman should not be vilified for the mistakes of a few, okay? We go through that shit enough in this country as it is, bruh. So why do people consistently repeat these cycles? You have to understand, if you have a problem with a black man and it's relationship based, you pick bad, okay? There are so many great black men out here, you just pick bad. Same thing for the guys, you pick bad women to be with. You do, it's your fault. Once you accept that you make the mistakes that cause the problems in your life, your life will get so much better. I used to, my ex-girlfriend almost put me in jail for five years. I can't tell you how many fucking times I've said this shit, right? And guess what? She was a black woman. Guess the ethnicity of my woman now. Take a wild guess. She's black. Oh, go figure, right? And me and her been together for almost a decade, bruh. Almost a fucking decade. So I could have easily been like, you know what, since my ex-girlfriend was black and, you know, I feel like it was an attack on black man, me being big, strong black man, I feel like it was an attack on me. So fuck all black women. They're all going to suffer. I hate them all. No, no. I took responsibility for what I did. What I did. I never argue with people. I don't argue with a, I don't argue with men. The fuck I look like arguing with a woman. But back then, when I was 21, 22, 23, I used to. I wasn't mature enough. I wasn't mature enough to understand that this is not the way to go about it in a relationship. That relationship failed and I played a part in it, right? My new relationship thrives because of the bullshit I went through in my last relationship, plus me growing up as a man. I had to understand, you cannot do certain things. You cannot say certain things. In, in, in public, in private, you have to listen. You have to be able to get your point across without being angry and aggressive. Don't put your hands on people. Have understanding, have compassion, have all of these things. And all of this shit taught me that I can truly be a leader in my life. I can truly be a leader in my life, my relationships, and whatever the fuck I got going on. But not once in this relationship did I say, you know what, that's that black woman shit. No, no, because it's not necessary. I sit here, no matter how many people I block, no matter how many times I hit un uninterested, I'm sorry, no matter how many times I try to avoid this type of content, it keeps finding me. It should not be a thing. Why is it that every time a video or videos of black men talking shit about black women and black women talking shit about black men, why is it that these videos go viral, but the other ones don't? Every time I see a video of a black man praising black woman or a black woman praising black man, it's always a hundred likes, two or three comments, and a few shares. But the other shit, the disrespectful shit, 
hundreds of thousands of likes, hundreds of thousands of comments, so many shares and reposts and shit. It's like, this shit should not be popular, bro. The world should not know the problems that you have in your relationship. And it's not every man's fault that you picked a shitty man. It's not. So this is the only video I'm going, I'm not about to be one of these content creators that consistently talks about this shit because it's going to be the same talking points over and over again. You got to be able to take this shit and apply it to your life and better yourself. Therefore, you won't even make these talking points anyway. And it's doubly bad when the motherfuckers who truly don't believe this shit, they say this shit because they know it's going to get likes, shares, comments, and views. I want this video to blow up, yes, so people can truly hear what the fuck I'm saying and we could probably move in a different fucking direction. But you got men out here who pander to women and cheat on their wives and beat their children and say all this shit. Oh, black man ain't this. Being he's a black man himself, he'll say some shit like black man ain't never been shit. You need to do this as a black woman. And, and then eat that shit up. And then you got chicks out here who are happily fucking married. Happily fucking married telling you as a black woman that you need to be single. You may not be listening to everything she fucking saying because you used to the shit that she's already said, but a lot of these chicks out here telling y'all to be fucking single and miserable. And you shouldn't be that way. All in all, man, we have to come to some type of common ground. It's a shame that we have to come to common ground. I have heard the thing that's popular now is that the black median income in 2053 is going to be fucking zero. I was hearing about this shit in 2018. So motherfuckers is like seven years later some shit. Listen. There are much bigger things going on in this world than the quarrels between the two people who are supposed to support each other. This is why we can't never get shit, because we're too busy fighting each other when we need to be loving each other, when we need to be understanding each other. We, all of us came from the same upbringing. We most, if I tell you, listen, I used to get beat as a kid for dumb fucking reasons. Didn't you? Didn't you? Right? I had weird motherfuckers in my family as a kid. Didn't you? I used to be afraid when the teacher called my fucking mama or my daddy and told them that I was fucking up in school and I knew I was going to get my ass beat at school. Didn't you? Right? We went through the same fucking shit. So why are we sitting here going back and forth? And then on top of that, why are we sitting here posting it? The world does not need to fucking see this shit. I, this shit pisses me off, bro. Listen, let me calm down. All in all, for whatever it's fucking worth, for whatever it's worth black man black woman we need to stop this shit okay we need to stop this shit the world is laughing at us the people who claim the people who may not necessarily look like us who only talk about these topics to further their own agendas are laughing at us and the only people that's going to suffer in the long run is us okay we are the only ones that are going to suffer because of this type of popularized content. No, I mean, this video is almost 10 minutes long and somebody is going to dissect the shit I'm saying and try to make it into something that's not. All I want, all I want is for us to get back to the point to where even if you have a problem, you discuss it, you work through it and you learn, maybe I shouldn't have talk to this person or maybe I shouldn't have dealt with this person or maybe I shouldn't have done this and let me let me better my life I did it I did it and so can fucking you the 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 the, the, the total type of content everything like the, the the source of energy for my content is that I did something that a lot of people struggle with and you can do it too right I just left the fucking gym I struggle with losing fucking weight but I know other people have done it so I know it's possible for me Right? My car was fucking on the fritz. I fixed the shit. Other people will see that video and be like, I can do that too. I tell people depression and anxiety only exist when you give it power. I used to be stressed the fuck out all the time, anxious all the time. I'm not that way anymore. So other people see me talk about it and they say, I can do that too. I have been in a great relationship with a black woman for almost 10 fucking years. You can do the shit too. We need to fucking stop this shit. Now, while I think this brother does have a point, I believe it's more so the tethers engaging in activity. In tethers, we do have some bed winches. We do have some dubesters, the shade butter Twitter crowd that engage in this rhetoric. And we got the buck bulking Negroes, the, the coons, um, um, our bed bucks and stuff like that that engage in this rhetoric on the opposite side of it. 
But I think since we've delineated, we've gotten better about weeding that out and not letting that become the focus of our conversation. And I love it. I got fired from my second job because I wouldn't post a ghost job. So let me explain what I do for my second job, what I did for my second job. I was a hiring manager. I usually just post job listings sometimes on Indeed or other job listing websites for my company. I'm not gonna explain what company that is because I can't do that. But I am gonna talk about what I can't talk about because I read through my NDA. I used to post ghost jobs, which are fake jobs to encourage our current employees to work harder. These jobs will be fake jobs so you can apply for the listing but not actually get hired. They're called ghost jobs. You're probably wondering, I apply for all these places, why am I not getting callbacks? You might have applied for a ghost job, which isn't a real job. It's just put there to show that we're looking for new hires at higher rates to get our current employees to work harder as an incentive to make them work hard, as opposed to increasing the base pay or the base rate. And I've made maybe 300 ghost job listings. I've made a lot. I've made so many. It's insane. And what messes me up is that they're still doing it. And I got into a little bit of a scuffle, a fracas one might say, with my previous hire manager. My hire manager said, hey, you, you stopped posting ghost job listings. What's going on, buddy? It's really working. It's helping our team morale. I said, listen, I, this is the first time I've ever said this in my life. I don't feel good about doing this. This might be the first time I've ever said that. I don't feel good about, I don't, usually I have like no moral, no ethics about anything. I just didn't feel good at all about doing it, despite the fact that I was getting a massive bag from it. And he said, well, we need somebody to do it. You're the best we've got. I'm not gonna continue to post ghost job listings so our employees can act like they are scared to lose their jobs. That ruins their mental, it destroys their mental health deeply. And he said, that's HR's job, not ours. So I'm talking to him and I'm arguing like, and at this point he's shouting, I'm calm. So I'm thinking I can take it to HR. And he says, you know, we're probably going to have to talk about this later, but you should clock out for the day. I said, I don't want to clock out for the day because we're not done talking about this specific issue. This is insane. This is psychotic. So I go cool off. I talk to my friends in the discord. We're cooling off. We're talking about it. Another one of my friends does the same job as I do. He also posts ghost jobs. And it's disgusting. It is, it's, it's not just my company. It is every company I'm seeing doing this. It's Walmart doing this. It's Amazon doing this. I'm not going to disclose my company, but it's Best Buy doing this. They're posting these fake job listings to trick you into thinking, oh, well, they're hiring a bunch of other things or because just in case you're looking to move to a new job or talk about needing a pay raise and they'll post a new job at a higher rate say you got hired in at 17 dollars an hour they'll post a ghost job at 22 dollars an hour and if you try to apply for that they'll clock you for that if you try to apply for that they'll clock you for that and they'll know it's you because they got your social security number you applying for the job it is a disgusting business practice because as soon as you apply to get a higher position or anything like that, they'll talk to you about it. And they'll ask you, why do you want a higher position? Do you want more pay? Are you dedicated to the company? They'll give you a performance review. They'll check everything about you just to see. I recommend, this is my honest opinion. This is my honest recommendation. Doing the bare minimum of my jobs. Bare minimum. I mean bare minimum of my jobs. Just, just coast. Just coast by doing the bare minimum of my jobs. Don't try to do anything extra or crazy. Just coast by doing the bare minimum at job. I'm so serious. Because I didn't know this was so much of it. I thought it was just my job doing this. I thought we were like the monopoly on doing this. That's what I thought. But I'm applying to other jobs. I'm applying to other places and I'm noticing the ghost jobs. I'm noticing that there are many of them. There are so many ghost jobs that are just fake. They're just fake jobs. I am sickened. I'm disheartened. I'm disgusted. I'm angry because I don't have my second job anymore, by the way. It was a small job. I worked 20 hours a week just doing the analytics and the hiring for a, a company. That's all I did. But I still work at Amazon. But, man, I'm, I'm just I'm just sickened. Amazon doesn't care about what I post, by the way. They, they're fine with me doing whatever. It, Amazon doesn't check anything. I do. They don't care about me at all. But, man, this is stupid. This is weird. Check. Look, look up ghost jobs. Just look them up. Now, family, let's say it. This is probably reason why a lot of us can't get on anywhere. So what they do, and I've seen this myself as a field service engineer, over there in Dallas, I think it's Presbyterian, they were building a new suite for one of our CT scanners. And three of the workers couldn't speak any English. They were female on a construction site. 
and the dudes that could speak English, they just kind of kept them close by. Give them something to do. You know, probably their wives, their girlfriends, whatever. But that's what they do. So their ghost job is on one end, then they push us out with the illegals on the other end. And I'm in Texas. And now this next segment, though, these rap bars, this brother, shout out to Kendrick. Kendrick, he laid the, the floor. He laid the, he built the, he erected the building. See, Cat laid the foundation. Kendrick erected the building. This brother hit this this uh, Jewish, a uh, supposed Jewish dude with some serious, serious, heavy bars. Listen in. Once upon a time, all of us was in chains. <laughs> <laughs> You can't compare the Holocaust to what happened to slaves. Never would. Them concentration camps wasn't even in the state. Somehow they still getting reparations to this day. Oh! Oh! That's fucked up. Them white folks is using black folks to make them richer. Mm. Bible said Jesus people had descriptions of religion. Mm. So miss me with this guy's white stuff. Cause move, we the original Jews and they not like us. You not even a Jew! Oh. Even a Jew. <laughs> you Jewish. You <laughs> not even a Jew. You Jewish. I just want to vent. You see, the key word in Jewish is ish. Means to some extent. So don't repent or find your whole family wedding. Now you got to get your mother, father, uncle, and your anti-Semitics. If all your people is If all your people this evil, I don't knock Hitler, bro. Cause y'all built the first slave ships after y'all got niggas trust. So I brought German protection. Call the cops if you want. Uh -huh. Let's not see what side you on when the swat sticker sucks. Oh. Oh. You not with it, huh? I'm racist cause I'm speaking some facts. Is my perception real sick if I'm keeping it rap? <laughs> I'm racist because I'm speaking some facts. Oh Is my perception real sick if I'm keeping it wrapped? This fool stamped. I wasn't hungry. I just needed a snack. Uh -huh. But my EBT don't even work out here. Wow. So I found another reason to snack. Oh! Cuz made me hold his gun since I was a jit short. Uh -huh. It's kind of like what Judas was to Jesus. It's gonna hit shortly. Uh -huh. I know about betrayal. I also had my people switch on me. This uh -huh. shit. <laughs> this is what y'all hate to promote. Another Jewish culture vote again by of my folks. Uh -huh. We battle to release anger, so we write it in quotes. What you else? battle to make fun of how we like to evoke. Oh. Now I gotta put you sleep for my pipe that you smoke. What else? How you looking like a rat cool trying to bite on the scope? Oh, oh, oh cause you think his life is a joke. <laughs> Even after I put him down with black eyes, he'll never know what it's like to be woke. Oh. Oh. So the next time you coming up with angles that you could attack, try to be judged for how good you rap and not just for your good Jew raps. Oh, Nick Cannon was canceled by your people, so they took from blacks. Now all of a sudden, frack on all you now, would you look at that? Oh! I guess I'm getting canceled next. <laughs> Man's gonna be wearing through mess. They gonna treat me how they treated Kyrie. Well, Anything to make my hand do rest. Oh, 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 oh. I right, Fanny, put on the ten four koofies. One moment. I think some of us have heard about the Anunnaki, the Book of Enoch, First and Second Maccabees, a lot of things outside of the Canon Bible that we know of. And a lot of us are just seeking knowledge. So put on the ten four koof with me. Go for a ride for a couple clips and then we'll come back to, to Earth.
So to speak. Do you guys remember this video over here where this guy is showing y'all how this mini portal works and then you see the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights coming through? Y'all see that? Well, this lady over here is showing how they just erected a huge one in Detroit, Michigan, y'all. Y'all see this? Now, I'm finna go up here and show y'all because this like is on some type of hill like a mound. Y'all see that? They said this is for art but when you look around it there's no other art pieces around it it is the only thing erected in this vicinity and this thing is huge y'all look at that this thing is so big and I believe there's much more to this portal than they are telling us now i'm gonna show y'all it's it's on some type of hill like a like i said a mound do you guys remember this one as well? This one is also in Detroit, Michigan with the Scientology building right behind it. Y'all see that? So obviously something is getting ready to happen. This is what I'm, look, transcending literally about again going through the portal. And then the Fibonacci sequence numbers over here because everything is in the shape of Fibonacci. And then toward the end of the video, this happens. Look at all these particles flying in the air. Look at all these particles flying in the air. And that was due to this mini portal. So if this mini portal is doing that, look at how big this thing is, y'all. Check it out. It's also the omega symbol too. The alpha and omega. Yeah, things are heating up, y'all. But let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace out. Check this thing out at night. Notice how the lights on the lens of the camera, like look what they're doing. Obviously, you did not see that with the naked eye, but it's interesting on the camera, huh? tragic deaths of both Sonia Massey and Terrell Miller are two examples that we've seen this year of police failing to use de-escalation tactics. And in both situations, it seems like no one is learning. None of our police officers have learned from either of these situations yet that something has to change. There needs to be a call of change made by police officers to your fellow colleagues. You can be the difference. You can make the change so that mothers don't have to stand by while their babies are shot to death. It's not up to me to determine the guilt of anyone in this situation, but Terrell Miller could have been avoided should have been avoided by using de-escalation tactics. And if the methods that you all have been taught are not working, then you need to band together and call for training for better methods. Call out your colleagues, call them on their actions. Go to your department heads, ask for the training that can save lives. It starts with you. Remember your oath to protect and serve. That oath is made to the people. The power of TikTok is strong. So JVR McGee, they finally investigating the hanging in Henderson, North Carolina. I think it's interesting how crooked media and the government is, though, to try to say it was a suicide. Now they're doing a deeper investigation and they're taking that back for the family. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy how in 2024 you can still see public lynchings. It's crazy that people try to sweep it under the rug. It's crazy how people would rather gaslight versus do right. So anybody who tries to, other people are, we're not talking about other people. Y'all been doing this too long and it's time to attack back. There must be change. This country was built in blood. It should be destroyed in blood by all of those who run this evil, by all of those who contribute, by all of those who support, by all of those who try to gaslight and don't do right. You're going to do right one way or another. And that's in hell or here on earth. Y'all better get it together. This is your call to action. Stop being demons.
Stop sweeping stuff under the rug. Stop gaslighting. No one cares. No one cares. No one loves us. Everybody want to hate blacks. How the hell do black people build a country forcefully, do all of this crap, and then we let Mexicans, Arabs, Asians in, and they're racist too towards us? That is so pathetic. You don't get to come here and hate us and we're the forefathers of this mother. What? What's really interesting is for white people to get so much respect from all these cultures. It makes me feel like it's blacks against the world. But that would mean that we're the gods versus all the young demons. That's exactly what it would mean. Especially with, you know, Russia showing black Jesus kind of really answers the question why we're so hated. Straight up. It's really weird. But uh, genetic mutations that spawned out of nowhere with a bunch of hate in them and egoically think they're better than the original man is weird. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, the math is math. That's just weird. That's a complex. That's an insecurity problem. And to sweep it under the rug and try to negate it and say other people are dealing with stuff, you go fight those wars. Comment on those channels. The videos when we talk about what white people do to us, y'all support that. Period. Do not, don't gaslight. Do right. Or we're going to attack you. In the comments, wherever. Stop gaslighting. Do right. You're not that smart. We see through the evil now. So what's up? What's up? How is that still happening in 2024? People need to get it together. This country uh, deserves a reckoning. His last location was at Sam's apartment, and then all of a sudden his phones were just off. The relative says 23-year-old Samuel Bush was a childhood friend of Elijah's, but when confronted about Elijah's phone pinging their last, told his family he didn't know where Elijah was. That's when Elijah's family called Toyota to see if they could get the GPS coordinates of his car, which they relayed to police. They gave him the coordinates that the car was in the middle of nowhere. The desolate desert near Gila Bend, a new lead for police. That's where they not only found his car, but the remains of Elijah Bradley on August 19th, days after he was reported missing. This relative describes what they were told about the conditions far more heinous than expected. I was told his cause of death was getting shot in the back. Um, and that they found him without his head and something so cruel and so graphic. Like, it's almost crazy to think that somebody is capable of doing that. Never trust people of color. She broke our hearts. Oh, I guess we can trust her. Never mind. I bet you're wondering what happened. Of course, I got the screenshots. Let's read it because the video has already been deleted. Even if you go look at the profile. In our small town of Pittsburgh, there was a close-knit group of friends, Bella, Sophie, Emily, Rebecca, and me. We have been inseparable since elementary school, sharing countless memories and adventures. However, our seemingly perfect friendship was about to be tested. One summer, a new girl named Kimora, the ninja, moved to town. She quickly in integrated into the group, charming everyone with her not ghettoness and friendliness. At first, it seemed like Kimora was the perfect addition to the circle. She always knew the right things to say and was always there to lend a helping hand. But as time went on, subtle cracks started to, uh, began to appear. Emily started noticing that Kimora often spoke behind their backs, twisting the words and creating unnecessary drama. I then found out that Kimora had been spreading rumors about her to other classmates. Bella discovered that Kimora had been copying her homework and taking credit for her ideas. Rebecca, the most trusting of them all, was devastated when she realized Kimora had been using him to get closer to her boyfriend who would never date a person of color. One evening, the friends decided to confront Kimora. We gathered at our favorite spot by the river, a place where we had shared so many happy moments. With heavy hearts, we expressed their feelings and revealed that what they had discovered. Kimora caught off guard, tried to deny everything, but eventually broke down and admitted to her actions, told us to run her ones and let's fight. We couldn't believe it. We all ran and she started to drag me to the floor. I had two black eyes and then she posted she wanted her fade with us. Realizing the damage he had caused, Kimora didn't care, but the trust was already broken. Our group decided it was best to part ways with her. It was an easy decision, but we know we, we knew we had to protect our bond and well-being. In the end, the experience brought the friends even closer. We learned the importance of trust and honesty and vowed to never let people of color come between us again. Though we had lost a good ninja friend, we gained a deeper understanding of what true friendship meant. I would advise everyone that is thinking about posting some wild shit like this to go to your nearest clinic and get your audacity levels checked because this shit just ain't right. Now, this is one of those stories that you really don't typically hear, right, about ladies having this type of behavior, although we know that it exists, right? So this is a story by a lady named Tarika James, 
Tarika James was a member of Word Center Church to where she had been attending ever since she was a kid. And this lady right here, who's the first lady of Word Center Church, actually had a chance to see this young lady grow up. In fact, when she turned 18, the first lady laid eyes on her and decided that she wanted to make her her lover. Yes, that's right. You heard what I said. Even though she is a married woman and her husband is the pastor of the church. That's how you get to be first lady, right? She was married. Her husband, pastor of the church. But she took this young lady down. She took her down through there for about 20 some years. And sad to say that this young lady, Tarika James, ended her life this past weekend. Because I guess, I don't know if it's because of the shame. I don't know exactly the details of why she took her own life. However, once again, this lady right here, like many pastors, um, I've had, I've, I got a story too. Pastors, yeah, they'll take your wife, they'll take what, your husband, whatever, right? Listen, I've been around the block and see most people think just like I thought as a young believer back in those days, right? I would just want to seek God, but I thought that these people had reached certain spiritual plateaus that the rest of us haven't reached. But as you can see, that right there is not the case. So listen, now this is the first lady featured right here all by herself. You, as you can see, this woman right here took advantage of that young girl. She was 18, so she was a of consent age. However, I don't know, I guess it just didn't dawn on her till one day it hit her like a ton of bricks, what, what had took place. She was a victim um, because, you know, anytime you put someone, you know, trust in someone, especially these so-called spiritual leaders and come to find out they are just as messed up as we are, if not worse, half the time or some of the time. So anyway, let me know y'all thoughts on this con um, on this video. And listen, my condolences to Torika James's family. I know this is very hard for you guys at this time. And listen, once again, y'all be careful, be watchful. Listen, don't don't put so much faith in these people. You see what I mean? I'm not saying not to respect folks that call themselves men and women of God, right? But you got to try the spirit by the spirit. You see what I'm saying? And if they doing anything contrary to what you know you're supposed to be doing or what contrary to what that book say, then you might need to keep it pushing. But anyway, once again, my condolences to, to Rika James's family. And um, man, this is mind blowing. Because like I said, normally when you hear stories like this, it's always men. But it's not always men. As you can see this time, it was a lady who took advantage of another little young girl in the church. Yeah. Anyway, man, let me know y'all thoughts about this down in the comment section, man. This is crazy. It's sad, but it's true. This happened too too often in the church. Zion out. Listen. So I live in Springfield. There's the water tower. Um, a lot of people are asking what's really going on here. And I can tell you that three years ago we had a very large population of stray cats and now they are gone you don't see any cats um our visitors are kind of violent you know and you'll see them threatening people they've threatened my family with machetes uh it's not a safe place um most of the stuff that the people are saying to city hall are true uh if you put two and two together you can figure some stuff out but it's definitely not somewhere you want to be. Battle parents, beware. Monsters are among us. The days of Roblox being a kid's game is long gone. Investigators got a hold of what they believed was the predator's username on Roblox. Men were arrested for allegedly preying on children they met through the Roblox video game. We're your family. We're not going anywhere. We'll always be here for you no matter what. Please come home. Roblox is more than just a game. It's a platform where users can express themselves by creating games of their own. And it's a huge hit among kids looking to unleash their creativity. On average, 200,000 players log on to Roblox every single month. And most of them are very young, making Roblox a hub for some pretty horrible people. We've you told me your mom was hot. She is. You said you said your mom. She's very hot. Well, does she know that I'm coming over to meet her? Did I tell her? You didn't tell her? No. I don't know how she's going to react. Did you send her the picture? No. Mom, there's this guy out here wondering if you can get his number. Or no, if she... I, he, he sent me pictures of her. 
Yeah, I think you pictured over to the sky and then I'll move on. Yeah, I don't know. You're taking pictures of me to some random person? No. Dude. I, I played Roblox and he... He sent me pictures of his That's name. weird. That's really weird. Isn't that like a kid's he gave game? Me all that address. Yeah, see? Get in this house. I'm sorry. This no. is not right. I can't believe we you're not playing on Roblox for a while. That's not okay. You just it's come roll up in someone's house. Don't you ever send pictures of me to anybody. Yeah, that's my weird. Mom. Either way. You know? Yeah, that's not okay. Get in the house. Come on. I'm you sorry he you wasted your time. Come on. This is why I told you, man. It's not all kids it's on this nice That's weird. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, it's not all kids on this Come on. 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 Come on there don't seep in and the things that are happening inside that are like cancerous to our communities we got to get out be one